this and power to do this. He had power to forgive sins. We dedicate it. Ask him. He says, all power is given unto me. It's not mine. It's given to me by who? By the Father in heaven. God Almighty gave him the power. A general power of attorney. What do you want? I give it to you. And he gave him that power to heal the blind, the lepers, and quicken the dead, and kill those 2,000 pigs, according to the Bible, and drying up the fig tree from its very roots, and stilling the storm. Who, where did he get the power from? From God. So glory to God. And somebody rightly remarked in the New Testament, when he performed a miracle, he said, glory to God for giving such powers unto men. This is it. Glory goes to God for giving such powers unto men, not to the man, to God. Jesus says, my brother says in the Quran, it is said that he knew, he knows the time of the coming of the hour of judgment. I think he has misread the Quran. The Quran is here, he can check it up. I would like to see where he says he knows, or God says he knows. The Bible contradicts that, the Holy Bible. It says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels, nor neither the Son, but the Father in heaven. In other words, in my knowledge, I'm not like God. In my power, I'm not like God. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. The big question remains, where does he say I'm God? Or where he says worship me? Or where does he say that I and God Almighty are one and the same thing? Is there a single Christian who can give me a verse that me and God Almighty are one and the same thing? Is there a Christian in this vast audience who can give me? John 14. No, what does it say, John 14? What does it say? That I am... Right. John, no. I, the reference is incorrect. No, the reference is not 14.6. The reference is, is, the quotation is right. I and my father are one. The quotation is correct. But it is John chapter 10, verse 30. Please, please, silence, please. The reference is John chapter 10, verse 30. Now, you know, if I ask, you will have the chance to ask questions, my dear brothers. Please sit down. Would you please sit down? I'm sorry, we're going to take questions later. We're not having interruptions now. Please, would you sit down now? Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Didat. Yes, Stewards. I am... Silence, please. I am... I am reading from my head, and my brother Shorosh just confirmed it, that it is John chapter 10, verse 30. Now, the context. You see, in 40 years, for 40 years, I have been talking to people. And when this verse is quoted, that, that Jesus said, I and my Father are one, the verse is there in the Bible. You can't contradict that. I'm asking, what is the context? And believe me, in 40 years, I have not come across a single learned man of Christendom, a single man in 40 years, who could give me the context. Yeah, you can open the book, yes, by opening the book. But no man in my life, 40 years now, no Christian with the name could give me the context. You, ha you have to open the book. Without opening the book, you'll never be able to give you the context. Now, let me give you the context. You see, the context is verse, starting from verse 23. It says, Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews around about him, means they surrounded him, and said, How long does that make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They are alleging that he's talking ambiguously. He's not putting forth his claim clear enough. That's a charge, a false charge. Because we know he didn't speak ambiguously. He put forth his claim that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah. 
But the Jews want to pick up a fight. They didn't like his preaching. Him calling them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you wicked and adulterous generation, you fools, you snakes. Would you like to hear people addressing you like that? And the Jews were not a people to forget in a hurry. So they find the man alone, they surround him, brandishing finger in his face. Come on, tell us. Why don't you tell us? They want to pick up a fight with him so they can work themselves into a frenzy and give him a good bashing, get their own back. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. He said, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. 28, verse 28. Verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30. I and my father are one in this to see that once the man has accepted faith, he remains in faith. I as the teacher see to, see to that as well as God Almighty sees to that. In purpose we are one. But the Jews were looking for trouble. And if you're looking for trouble, you, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. So they picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Kufa. Because the thou being a man maketh thyself a god. You are a man, you're claiming to be God. There's another false charge. First false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Now another false charge that you're claiming to be God. That's the Jews alleged. The Christian agreed with the Jews. They said he did make such a claim, but he was entitled to it. Let us hear what Jesus says. The Jews say he blasphemed. The Christians say he did, but it is no blasphemy because he was entitled to. What does Jesus say? He says, is it not written in your law?